college basketball is my first thought today as Michigan and Wisconsin squared off in a Big Ten game on Sunday. Now, by this time, you've seen the video um, of the coaches getting into it and the players uh, after that getting into it. Um, you know, I would start with this. There are levels, obviously, to bad behavior. I can speed and go nine miles per hour over the limit. I'll get a ticket. Then there would be another level of bad behavior. I could go 60 miles an hour over the limit in a school zone. I'd lose my license. Then there could be another level of bad behavior. I get in my car and drive somebody over on purpose to kill them. There are levels of bad behavior. So both Greg Gard, the Wisconsin coach, and Jawan Howard, the Michigan coach, I think should be suspended for their immature, juvenile, boorish behavior after the game as they got into each other's face. It appeared both people touched each other. I don't care who did it first. It's bad behavior. You're paid seven figures a year to be the adults in the room. But of the levels of bad behavior, which included Michigan and Wisconsin players getting into like a fight afterwards, which has been under-discussed, Throwing a punch by Jawan Howard at a Wisconsin assistant is the worst behavior of all the really boorish, churlish behaviors. I don't think he should be fired, but this all comes down to ego. I went to social media. How many, how many guys said this? Hey, man, you touched me. It's game on. Well, no, it's not. You have to walk away from that stuff if you're a grown-up that wants to make five, six, seven million a year coaching basketball at the highest levels representing universities. It can't be about your ego. All the time in life, politicians, sportscasters, basketball coaches, public figures have to walk away from schmucks and jerks and instigators. Okay, Both coaches need to grow up, but throwing a punch is the worst action of all the actions. So therefore, that's the one I would penalize and punish the most. Some people said, well, Colin, in the 80s, Bobby Knight did this and that. Listen, I'll never defend Bobby Knight. He's my least favorite coach in the history of my career. But in the 80s, we smoked on airplanes. Let's not take the behavior that was accepted in the 80s and say in 2022, it's all good. Bobby Knight would not last today. Bobby Knight should not have lasted in the 90s. It's embarrassing that people defended him and did for two and three decades. But it's 2022. Jawan Howard knows better and Greg Gard knows better. Both the guys need to grow up. Something else that happened over the weekend, Rich Ornberger, former NFL player, a radio host in San Diego and a frequent guest on my show, the very popular herd. I'm sure you've seen it. Most of America has. Anywho, he came out and said with absolute conviction, and he's got connections all over the league, that uh, Brady and Arian's relationship soured. Um, My first takeaway is, yeah. I mean, you tell me the superstar in American sports that likes being shouted out and ripped by his coach regularly. I never liked when Arians did that. He has a right to. He's the head coach. But Bruce can be very loose in his coaching, in his style. And I thought ripping Brady repeatedly, publicly, was poor form. Tom's a good guy, but he's got an ego. He's the best player in the history of the most popular domestic league. I'd use discretion when ripping him publicly. And um, so when I hear these stories by Rich Orenberger, I absolutely believe them. I think Tom is retired for good, but I do think some of the suggestions that he would consider the 49ers if they called are real. From there, favorite team, total respect for Kyle Shanahan. They're built for an older quarterback. He doesn't have to throw 45 times. Kyle Shanahan would prefer he throws 27 times. Now, the division's tough. It'd be another system he has to learn, and Shanahan's system is usually better for all quarterbacks, Matt Ryan, Jimmy Garoppolo, in the second year. But I think he'd consider it. He'd have a glass of wine with Giselle, and they discuss it in their Costa Rica village they own. Maybe an island for all I know. Who knows? But it's worth discussing. When I retire, 
somebody may come and make me an offer and I'm 70 years old and there may be an offer I go, I'll consider it. But I think Tom is a person that what he says he believes and what he says he usually does. And I do think he's got a fairly broad life, kids, wife, businesses, he'll stay retired. But the Niners offer would be worth a glass of vino with your wife to discuss. I've always liked Phil Mickelson, the golfer, but he had a tone deaf explanation for why he's supporting a Saudi Arabian backed super golf league that's attempting to lure players away from the PGA Tour. The new Super Golf League is proposing that some players would receive guaranteed money upwards of $30 million a year. They would basically get paid no matter how they play, like NFL or NBA stars. Mickelson's biographer quoted him saying, We know they killed Khashoggi, the Washington Post journalist, and have a horrible record on human rights. They execute people over there for being gay. Knowing all of this, why would I even consider it? Because this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to reshape how the PGA Tour operates. If you say something and it sounds like an onion headline, you may want to retract it as soon as you can. Listen, when you watch the PGA Tour, do you ever think, man, these athletes look like they're being treated poorly? Come on now. Last year, the average player made $1.5 million. In fact, there have been multiple times in the last 20 years, the highest paid athlete in America has been a golfer. Tiger or Phil Mickelson. Back 2017, Forbes released a list of the highest paid athletes ever. Four of the top six were golfers. Tiger, Arnie, Jack, and Phil. When you say things and it sounds like an onion headline, you got to retract it. The PGA isn't perfect. Either's pro basketball, NHL, baseball. I mean, baseball's currently in a lockout. Once again, owners being, in my opinion, greedy. But the PGA Tour does a really good job. And all I have to do is look at the prizes, the average revenue, how golfers are treated, the courses they play on, the jets they fly on, the sponsors that endorse them to know PGA does just fine, does just right with its players. Hi everybody, it's Colin Coward, your affable host. I don't ask for much, really. That little box over there, subscribe box, push that. Subscribe to the YouTube page of The Volume Sports. Now, there will be a brief electrical shock after you do it. But hey, we're all in this together, right?